Before I begin this review, I want to make sure that you guys know that this key was obtained from one PR studio which was obtained from the developer. Keep that in mind as I go into the review and the details regarding this game. Vampires Vampires have started to make a push to be the frontrunner of the popular monsters portrayed in the current landscape of media. Ever since the days of Dracula, there's been a mystique around the creatures of the night, and they've come in a variety of forms. And no, I'm not talking about Twilight. From the stoic Dracula, countering the like of Simon Belmont and the stupidity of men, to the likes of Bloodrain and her arm blades and more, let's say, personal quests. And continuing that line of vampires in video games, we have Ani Chinabra Z2 Chaos to continue the long line of vampires with this. Yep. These are vampires. There's also the clan of the baneful blood in there as well, which you have no idea what that means. This is probably not what you were expecting, but we live in a whole new era of opportunity, right? Vampires can be bikini cowgirls too? Ani Chiabra Z2 Chaos is brought to the States today on the PS3 and PS4 for $39.99, and it's an action game where you slice up the undead with four ladies of the zombie punitive forces, Kagura, Saya, Aya and Saki. Kagura and Saya are of the vampiric clan, and Saki and Aya are of the baneful blood clan. They're not vampires, however. There are two warring sides that are destined to fight each other, but ignore that for this game, because there's a bigger threat at work here. The story attempts to play out for a fight against the invading loads of undead that are hitting all the corners of the earth. Now, when it comes to an overall narrative of the game, the game isn't really going for a strong plot or character focus here. Now sometimes you'll get small character building moments before your hack and slash missions. There is a sense of rules and some backstory to this world, but it definitely takes a backseat to gameplay in the end. As for the characters, once again I will say it takes a backseat to the gameplay in question. The dialogue and translation and also writing isn't exactly the top of the line writing here. Some of the dialogue is sort of cringeworthy, but honestly, I'd argue that's what the game is going for. You know those B-horror movies that are going for a certain aesthetic? That's what I'm comparing Anichiabra to, a B-horror movie plot, and it is effective in its groan-inducing humor and silly characters. Several of the tropes that you would expect to find in the characters are portrayed here, and they're sort of obvious. And honestly, that's fine. The voice actresses that play these characters are reasonable, and portray their characters reasonably well. But look, let's get into the core of the game, the gameplay. Basically, this game plays as a cross between Dynasty Warriors, God of War, and Spectacle fighting games. Now, you have a bunch of options and different mechanics in combat, but let's start with the basics. Each character has two main weapons, which range from samurai swords, the chainsaws, to just their fists. Some characters have a sub-weapon as well, such as throwable daggers. Now, the idea here is simple. Slash, slash, and then slash your enemies some more. And let's start with that. Some people are going to indicate that this game is a button masher, and they are right to a certain extent. I mean, just take a look at this combo list here. By the time you're finished with that combo in particular, it may have changed the calendar year. So yes, needless to say, there is a bit of button mashing to the combat, especially the first time through the game. Now, like I said, there are a variety of different options in combat beyond the combos in question. When you've built up enough ecstasy, you heard me, ecstasy, by dealing damage to your enemies in a period of time, you can unleash an ecstasy attack using one of your meters. You can have three in total, and the more ecstasy you have, the longer the attack you will unleash will go on. Now, certain characters are a lot more effective in their ecstasy attacks than others. Kaguro's fireballs, for example, they're fantastic. Saya's ground pound, not so much. Now, as to the characters themselves, they're all very similar to each other in the end, 
And while each clan has their own unique attribute to it, such as the Vampiric's clan ability to regenerate health, or the Baneful Bloods clan's dodge and slow down time mechanic, they mostly play the same, in particular with Aya and Kagura. Now, there's a little bit more difference with the two sisters of Saya and Saki, with Saya's chainsaw being for more slow but multi-hit damage, while Saki excels more in a quick precise and large finishing strikes. In the end, you'll feel like you're playing the same game though. Now while in combat, you can also summon your companions to the battlefield to attack along with you, whether it just be a partner or the entire squad. Now, if you're looking for how to get the high scores and levels, this is it as your combo meter builds quickly with every person attacking, and you can get some ridiculous combos going. In fact, I will say that it honestly breaks the score mechanic in many cases, as I was able to get 3, 5, 7 times the score of the S ranking by doing that, so I wonder if someone didn't see that in testing or setting the score ranks for that game. It really does feel a little bit off in this area. You also have the ability to transform at a certain point in the game by building up enough blood from your enemies to make a hyper mode of some sort. In this mode, you're faster, ecstasy builds much faster, and you can still switch out your characters to use the mode later on, it doesn't drain while that happens. Your characters basically go the equivalent of Super Saiyan. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Aya actually does. That's a Super Saiyan. That's pretty much a Super Saiyan, right? Okay, okay, okay. I've given you a bunch about how the combat works, but is the combat fun? Well, that's where things start to get a little bit more interesting and problematic. When the game provides a challenge in terms of the technical side of things, then yes, the combat can be fantastic. In particular, there's a certain boss battle late in the game that I feel really emphasizes this, as you use all your abilities to your best ability, and it's almost required in that case. It really challenges you. But the thing is, that's a rarity and most of the time you are slashing the same enemies over and over again, and frankly, there's little challenge to it at medium difficulty. Now keep in mind, I play games like this on hard at first, but this option was unavailable until I beat the game here. In fact, let's put this out there, I completely didn't realize there was an actual dodge button until halfway through the game. I'm actually quite serious about that, either I had forgotten or didn't read through the right tutorial screen, but I actually went a long time in the game without ever dodging, wondering how I was supposed to be dodging damage. The thing is, it never actually really made a huge difference in most cases. I still got S ranks, I still got V ranks. For those who are looking for combat to be a little bit more varied and a little bit more technical, it's not here. Combat will start to feel very repetitive very quickly. But the thing is, I won't argue that there isn't a sense of power that you develop from slashing through enemies over and over again. I give it the Dynasty Warriors type of effect, but that's a little bit more technical actually. Very much in a powerful fantasy setting, you're the king of the castle here, and you're just chopping enemies up left and right. As you go along, you'll of course get more used to switching characters out when they get stunned or knocked out, or even going for some flair with some of the moves you're pulling off. But to say it isn't a grind at times would be misrepresentative of the experience. It can be. Because that's pretty much what every level is. Kill some dudes, kill some more dudes, maybe kill a boss here and there, then kill some more dudes. Not that a game has to be anything more than that, but frankly, some mix-ups with more enemy types or some different types of combat elements would have been appreciated. And the thing is, at first I thought maybe the hard mode would give me a bit more challenge after you unlocked it. It seemed to at first. But here's the thing, after a tiny bit, and I mean tiny bit meaning 15 minutes, it doesn't feel that significantly different from normal in terms of challenge. Now going back to the power fantasy thing, the upgrade system helps to add some variety in terms of combat as the orbs your enemy drops during combat can be used to get yourself different weapons, equipable rings, and various new abilities. Now this can add some new elements to your arsenal, which can be interesting if you mix things up. That's if you do it it's not required. And of course you get these ridiculous long combos, which unfortunately it is great and all in some retrospects, but honestly it starts to get old after a while. I hit that square button a lot in this game. It doesn't help that the enemy AI is, what's the word I'm looking for, slow to say the least. A lot of times several enemies around you may just sort of sit around and look at you, like you've got something on your face, not doing anything and waiting for you to make a move. Like they are literally cattle that you need to slaughter, they don't need to do anything. Now, you don't want them all attacking at once of course, you get into this weird overcrowded situation, 
but someone should be attacking me here. Or two people, or maybe three. And this isn't uneasy. This is unnormal. And that also happened on hard. Something feels incredibly wrong with the combat in this section here. However, there is one saving grace of this combat, the chase mechanic. Holding X on the controller will have you jump and chase at your opponent, and this one addition is a welcome addition of the combat that other games should really think about implementing at times in this genre. This speeds up combat immensely, as you can dash from enemy to enemy, chopping them up into bits, even if they're across the map, and the downtime between combatants is basically zero. I can't emphasize this enough, this one addition improves the spectacle combat in an insane amount, and honestly might have saved the combat over time in the long run, to bringing it up to respectable levels. This was the one thing that I will have to say this game does better than some others out there. But on that same level, the spectacle combat and over the top nature of the game may have gone too far in some cases. Take for example the refresh system of your weapons. If your weapon gets too much blood on it, you have to wipe it off with the L1 button. I'm just not sure what purpose this serves in the long run. This may force you to change to your other weapon in several cases, but the slashing and attack nature of the alternate weapon isn't that much different in terms of combos in the end, even if they seem like they are visually. It seems to slow down combat more than anything, and that seems weird in a game like this, and I do have to question exactly why the mechanic was put into the game in the end. Let's also talk about the boss fights, which are very hit and miss experiences, and mostly misses. There are bullet sponges that may do some damage to you, but between the various abilities that you have and the items that you probably don't need to use but are available to you anyway, these are mostly just larger enemies to take on in most cases. Again, there were a few of them that did stand out as a challenge and maybe want to fight them again, but to say the last boss of the game was a pushover would probably be the understatement of the century. And of course, of course, you have quick time events here. And while using the touchpad and the direction of the swing was a nice touch, it's still another quick time event portion that got old very quickly. Now, on normal mode, I was able to beat the game in about four hours, which isn't that long. There is replayability here with, you know, different quests you can do and different items to get, but honestly, the campaign is a little sh on the short side. Beyond the story mode of the game, there are some alternative modes. Missions is a mode that gives you specific objectives, which involves using your skills or killing people in specific ways. Again, it's a continuation of combat scenarios that the main campaign has brought forward, but this time it's in bite-sized chunks. These missions unlock costume parts, which can be used to customize the four girls in a variety of ways. Oh yeah, costume parts, let me get to that. You can dress up the four ladies in a variety of ways. You can make one a cat girl, for example, or you can make a demon girl. You can have them play out the typical Japanese schoolgirl with putting bread in their mouths. And of course, you can put them in provocative clothing. Because let's be honest here, did you expect that wasn't going to be the case from a Japanese game? Now, some of them are very revealing and makes you wonder what sort of practical combat purpose they serve in the long run, but you're also fighting zombies, so any sense of realism was thrown out the window with the whole vampiric clan thing. I do like the fact that you can position and mess around with where to place the parts in question, but honestly, it's a small addition to give you a reason to mess around with the character's looks in the long run. As to the visuals of the game, they're alright. It is a PS4 and it's 1080p and whatnot, again it's 30 frames per second unfortunately, but here's the thing, it, it feels like it's a little bit underpowered. The visuals are okay, they feel very PS3-esque, and I'm playing on the PS4. They're not the sharpest ones in the drawer, and unfortunately, that does show up in combat a little. Now the frame rate is reasonable at times, and mostly reasonable I should say. The thing is, is that when you get a lot of enemies on screen and you start doing like a magic attack, it can slow down, and slow down significantly. But you don't really notice that in most combat situations. That's only in one of the missions that I saw that in. In the end, I did have a bit of fun with Onichiabra Z2 Chaos, even if it wasn't as technically sufficient or technically complex in terms of the combat that I wanted it to be. The chase mechanic is what saved it from a lot lower of a score, because of its fun factor while using it and keeping you in the fight. But the game's repetitive nature in the end and lack of true challenge is what drives me to give this game a 5.5 out of 10, an average level game. Again, I use the Tech Raptor guidelines regarding official reviews, which you can find in the description below. 
However, as with most scores, that's going to be specific to what the player finds the most important in question, and I'm going to try to match the game with those people. If you like a game that gives you a lot of variety in combat, but doesn't force it on you, and you like perfecting runs with stringing long strings of combos together for maximum effectiveness, Onichiabra is the kind of game that will satisfy your requirement. While the tropes with anime are strong here, the core combat does have some cool elements to it. Again, I point to the chase mechanic. That could really be taken to the next level with more competent AI at times, and some variety. But the core feeling of power-like fantasy is here, and if you want to feel strong, this game will give you that. Now, if you're looking for a challenge, however, stay away from this game. It's not here. And those who don't like repetitive slashing or repetitive titles will do well to avoid this title because there is a lot of repetition. Alright, this is Dragnik signing out, hoping that you all have a wonderful day and you keep on gaming. If you liked this video or would like to help the channel out, you know, share the video with someone, give it a like, comment if you want to see something change in the future below. And again, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more of it, you may want to hit that subscribe button on the left hand side. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, take a look at this video on the left hand side as well. And if you'd missed my last video, take a look at the right hand side. Once again, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.